And now, uh, awesome guest for you guys, Nina Turner, Senator Nina Turner, uh, joining us on TYT again. Welcome, Nina. How you doing? Great to be here, Jane. All right, great. So, Nina, let's talk a little bit about the future. Um, so, obviously, 2016 was an amazing campaign. Um, as I explained in the last segment, uh, Bernie in eight months closed a 50 point lead, which is just spectacular. Uh, never really got the credit for it, obviously, same old thing, corporate media. Uh, and and the, But in 2020, it was less of a surprise and it was more of a heartbreak. Uh, a lot of folks, including myself, thought, we got him, we got him, I think we're gonna win. Yeah. So um, a lot of people are asking, okay, after that heartbreak, what do we have left to hope for? Well, I'm right there with you. Feeling though we we had it this time, you know. In terms of moving forward, it's certainly very clear that Senator Bernie Sanders was the spark. The movement is the fire. We are the fire, and it is our job, our collective job. Those progressives, leftists, and I'm losing track of what we call ourselves these days, but people who believe in humanity, who are pushing for causes that are bigger and higher than themselves, people who believe what is just and believe in what is just, what is right, and what is good. The work continues, it never stops. It's the same work that our forebears have done before us. It's our work to do. And you know, the senator was very clear about that. That is why not me, us is real. And we need to take, take that mantle, not me, us. It is about us and we must carry on. So Nina, how do we carry on? So I know part of the answer is supporting more progressive candidates. Absolutely. And so. You know, and that's exactly why I helped to, to co found Just Democrats. That's why I now founded Rebellion Pac. Um, and we're gonna talk to Brianna Wu in a little bit. She's running Rebellion Pac uh, to help candidates now and in the future. Uh, so, how can other progressives help? So, how can Bernie Sanders help uh, other progressive candidates? How can you help? Well, sir, I've, I've endorsed several candidates. I will continue to do so. I'm going to do that in a more organized fashion. I get calls, emails, DMs, every social media outlet where people can reach me asking for my endorsement. So I am going to formalize that. And hopefully when we get through this part of COVID, it probably will not be until next year, the whole new normal, but we gotta find ways to make our physical presence known in a safe way. And if we can't be there to help candidates physically, we gotta be able to do it virtually. And that is the beautiful thing about being able to give your time, your talent, your treasure. You can make calls for people who you support and you gotta leave your house. You can give a donation so that they can either purchase commercials or ads or send flyers. There's all sorts of ways still in the 21st century that we can help the candidates that we wanna support. I believe the, the future is that the leftists, we need to run people against neoliberal Democrats in every single election cycle, period. Make it known, just come on out and just say that's exactly what we're gonna do. If you are not willing to use the people's power on the people's behalf, we come in for the people's seat. Not for you, but for the people's seat. And we're gonna talk about what the people need. We need leaders who have a vision that will provide provision for the people. It's our government and it's our money. So nobody can sit on the sidelines, not in 2020, not in 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, and so on and so forth. We also need progressive organizations to come on and stiffen up here. We got outmaneuvered, point blank. The neoliberals coalesce. Ben, Jink, we, we know what happened. And so the progressive movement needs to be more agile. So those who lead organizations, I want to see progressives build a pact with one another, P-A-C-T, a table of progressives. Let's find those issues that we can agree on, top three. So you can keep your autonomy and your group and keep on fighting. But if we say our top three issues are criminal justice reform, Medicare for all, legalizing cannabis, hey, then that's what we do. And come by hook or by crook, we stand in together, no daylight between us on those issues. And that way that allows those organizations to continue to do the beautiful work that they're doing on other issues. But we we are lockstep on, on certain issues. And then another way is to come together to run candidates against neoliberal Democrats. 
Yeah, there's a thousand things I want to say about that. <laughs> but Ben, I want to let you jump in here. I, I am so happy to hear Nina say that about running and primary, primary everybody, right? Oh. The establishment showed us this year that they will not abide by their own rules. They blacklist certain companies that work with uh, candidates who are primarying uh, someone that's in the establishment. But then Nancy Pelosi turned around and endorsed oh. um, someone in a, in a primary challenge. And so since they did that, let's return the favor, not only to be spiteful, because I'm not above being petty, but because like Nina said, it's the people seat. And they're not using the seat or that power to be to, to help the people. So by all means, if there are people out there who are sincere about their progressiveness and not just using it as talking points and they are ready to get into the fight, then we need to find them, run them and primary everybody. Yes, so Nina, I'm gonna ask you um, um, a kind of a hard question here because if I'm a progressive in Congress, I'm calling you every other day. Um, but um, but I don't get the sense that even our top progressives are stick, sticking together too well. Because I mean, when you talk about the groups, the groups, you know, some of them are wonderful, and we talk about it. You led our revolution. Uh, I, I love our revolution. I think they do amazing work at the grassroots level. Yeah. I, I think there's a couple other groups that are great. Obviously, Just Democrats, I think, has made a giant difference. Absolutely. Um, but, um, but the rest of them, God, we couldn't organize them if our lives depended on it. They just, there's honestly, so many of these groups are so selfish, it's unbearable. <laughs> but, but when we talk about the, can, about the folks in Congress, you get a sense that they're reaching out to the progressive community a lot. I mean, almost none of them endorse Cory Bush. Don't get, yeah, don't get me started on Sister Bush. And um, I, that was a candidate that I endorsed. We've been together since her first run in uh, 2018. And I'm so glad that we stuck together. She calls me Big Sis. Yeah, too many of them turned a blind eye to Sister Bush. And now they call in there and patting her on the back. You go, girl. I knew you could do it. You know, that's foolishness. You got to stand with people, especially people you come up the ranks with. And I get it. You know, when you serve in a caucus, as I did, that if you got, you know, people you then started to build a relationship with, and then you got your girl or your your colleague rather running, you know, it may be hard. But see, when you take the personality out of it, just let your colleague know, look, we serving together, but I gotta support this candidate for these reasons. I'll catch you on the other side, but I'm going for this candidate for reasons other than the fact that I serve with you and therefore I gotta sign some type of document or some oath that I gotta support you. Either the folks that we'll need progressives in name only, okay? Cause cause our lives are on the line right now. The planet is on the line. All of the things that we hold dear is on line. So we need some folks that's gonna give up some stuff for the privilege of holding the people's power. And there are groups like Roots Action and PDA and other groups who are really ready, willing and able to go ham on these neoliberals and these progressives in name only because we only have a, 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 a finite amount of time to have the people's power. And we gotta be about the people's business, Jane Ben. It's time out, scare folks, we will need, no. Come on and let's change some things. We can turn that house around in particular because it's an every two year venture versus the Senate, which is every six year. I'm not saying that we shouldn't have run some candidates in the Senate, but imagine if we focused on local level and on that Congress. Every time they turn around, there's a progressive running against somebody that is not doing the bidding of the people of the United States of America. And I'm talking about the poor, the working poor, and the barely middle class, the marginalized people cast aside. Them the folks I'm talking about, because all the other folks don't need nobody looking out for them. <laughs> Can I just say Nina Turner for whatever she wants to run for 2021, 2022, 2024, Nina Turner, fill in the blank, because that's the kind of passion and fire that we absolutely need. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. Well, you know, first of all, thank you for inventing Pino. As the first time I heard it is from you just now, uh, progressives in name only. Uh, I don't know if it's Pino or Pino. Maybe it's Pino. Maybe that's <laughs> Pino is a little too nice. <laughs> I gotta Pino. give some credit to Norm Solomon of of Roots Action. That's him. That's all him. All right. Yeah. Um, so, but Ben brings up a, a good point. Um, so let, let I don't know if we're the first to ask you, but let's ask you: um, Are you thinking about twenty twenty four? I am. I mean, there are lots of people 
that I hear from all the time from all over this country who want me to consider running again. It's always something that is on my list. But for this moment, I'm gonna continue to help progressive candidates, progressive causes. I'm also gonna nav- not continue to navigate the racial justice space uh, to do those things. So we need corporations to come on through. Now they come through for themselves and the tax breaks and how they lobby Congress. We need them come on through for the people. And there is a way to get those corp- some of those corporations to do that, especially on the justice side since the killing of George Floyd, we know that a number of corporations have pledged a whole lot of money for racial justice. Let's see if they can do that. So I'm also gonna put some of my talent on, on that side, but absolutely strong consideration for 2024, no doubt. Okay, well, that's clear. Uh, so uh, Nina, when you look at the difference in how two groups perceive you, it is, as stark as I have ever seen it for anyone. Uh, The progressive movement absolutely loves you. Um, And the media, not so much. Um, So uh, when we talk about you as a potential presidential contender, um, uh, when I talk to Washington reporters, they're like, oh. And I'm like, why? I literally can't name anyone in the progressive movement that is more popular. Uh, and they're just absolutely convinced that it could only be a corporate Democrat. So how do you react to something like that? And how do you overcome something like that? Well, thank God I don't have to depend on corporate media to be my measuring stick. The people are my measuring stick. And if I do decide to do something in 2024, it won't be because of the media uh, lifted me up. It'd be, it will be because the people lift me up. See, when you're out here doing the people's bidding, sometimes that's in conflict with mainstream media, it's in conflict with neo it's, it's in conflict with the status quo, and I'm all right with that. You know, as President Franklin D. Roosevelt said one time when he got that progressive, uh, when progressives pushed him to be more progressive, when he said, and, and Senator Sanders said the same thing on the campaign trail, I welcome their hatred. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we love Nina Turner. Uh, I, you know, I've told this story many times, but Nina, that I'm watching a speech of yours, uh, and uh, and you get to a point. Well, first of all, you go into the crowd, which I love. And it, people have forgotten that nobody does that other than you. And then you get to a point where you say, you know, uh, they say I'm an angry black woman, yeah. and that's when you paused. And I was like, don't say it, don't say it. That's when everybody apologizes, right? He says, no, I'm not, please, right? And you're like, damn right, I am. I'm like, she's the one. She's the one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lean into that angry. I'm just saying, I mean, if you ain't mad about what is happening, you know, 92 million people in climbing without health care, you know, underinsured or uninsured. If you ain't angry that folks are facing eviction, meanwhile, back at the ranch, Congress can go on breaks while people are suffering. If you ain't angry that people are playing games with the military industrial complex, that even in the House of Representatives, now we get what Mitch gonna do, Mitch got to go. But even in the House of Representatives, we can't pass a 10% cut on the Pentagon budget. If you ain't angry that people in this country can't make ends meet, we can't even get a basic universal income. People uh, haggling about whether or not we're gonna keep the $600 extra a week going. If you ain't angry that essential workers are not protected and doctors and nurses don't have all the the, the equipment that they need. If you're not angry that our babies because of COVID and the fact that we were not prepared are going to be set back, especially in poorer communities from an education perspective. If you are not angry that people going to bed hungry every night, babies going to bed hungry every night in a hegemon nation, Baby, if you're not angry, something is wrong with you. And you know, I had a boss who once said, if your hair is on fire, you hello somebody. Hello, somebody. You have to (laughs) act like your hair is on fire. Hello, somebody. Our whole body is on fire right now. People are suffering. The pandemic just blew the roof off of the illusion. There are no more illusions in the United States of America, or dare I say the world, that the people who are catching hell lay bare were catching hell five years ago, 10 years ago, hell, 10 minutes ago. Those are the people. And if we can't elect folks to office, all levels of government, but particularly the federal level, where they ain't got the balance, one damn budget, who are don't have the will to stand up for the people against, if, if, if they're corporate, Folks and people giving you donations who can't see how people are suffering. If the if the if the wealthy folks in this you're not making enough money. What is it? The twelve wealthiest 
people control one trillion dollars. Mm. I mean, that's called predatory capitalism. It's called excessive greed and we don't give a damn who dies. Mm. I mean, if you got to get your money from folks like that, then you don't need their money. It is something unseemly and immoral. And some of these same people who do believe in a God will go to damn church knowing what the hell would Jesus do? He'd be turning over the money tables like he did. That's what he would be doing. So I'm tired. I'm tired of the foolishness being in Jink. I'm over it, been over it. So yeah, I'm an angry black woman, and you're damn right, my hair is on fire, and I am going to act like my hair is on fire at all times. That's me. Preach. Yeah. Preach. <laughs> my God. Teach it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I've got, I don't know if you're waiting on me to say something, Jake, but there's absolutely nothing that needs to be said after Nina Turner, the indomitable Nina Turner. <laughs> All right. So, for, for, by the way, uh, if you want to hear more of that, uh, Nina's got a, t- a podcast, Hello Somebody. You're going to love it. So, make sure you check that out. Nina, before I let you go, then, uh, let, me, let me ask one more question. Um, so, in order to do it right next time, we got to learn the lessons of the last two times. So, Give me your biggest takeaways from what went wrong and how we can fix it in 2024. We got to know that the neoliberals see us coming. They saw that in 2016, how well the senator did, and they saw him coming this next time. Not only him, but they saw the movement behind him coming. And they had to all coalesce. We were not agile enough as a movement. We need some more discipline. Now, you know, we, we write on the issues, but babe, we got to get discipline. To be able to overtake an entrenched system that is not going to roll over and say, you know what, progressives, y'all so right. We do need to take care of Mother Earth. People do need uh, universal health care. We do have to do something with a criminal justice system that is, Lord have mercy, don't get me started. So we have to organize and be disciplined and move like we want to win. It is not enough to have the right ideas, baby, we got to win. It is time to prepare right now. There's an African proverb that says the following, one must never build their shield on the battlefield. If we want a different outcome and a different result in 2024, then it's shield building time right now. Because they coming for us and they they are going to coalesce because they fear the change that we're talking about. Leaders who answer 99.9% to the everyday people of this nation, they fear it. So we got to organize. You know, Brother Killer Mike put it best. I can't put it any better than he did. He said, plot, plan, strategize, organize, mobilize, and capitalize. Baby, that's what we need to do right now. We can't get ready in 2024. We need to get ready right now. Yeah. Um, look, uh, There is a squad that is not yet in Congress, but I just uh, want folks to whisper of a dream. Um, Nina Turner, Killer Mike, Jamal Bowman, or E. Bush. Okay, if you like the last squad, wait till you get a load of this squad. There it is. (laughs) That's that's, that's too hot to handle. I don't know if the world ready for that. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I'd like to take that squad out for a drive. See how that one goes. That was um, so <laughs> happy birthday to Senator Bernie Sanders. He definitely took it to the system in 2016. Tried to repeat it in 2020. Our movement and this nation will never be the same because he had the courage to stand up. Thanks for watching the Young Turks. I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.